Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to Purvankala Remitted Q4 FY24 Earnings Conference Call hosted by Access Capital Limited. As a reminder, all participants' lines will be in the listen-only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during this conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchtone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Ashutosh Mittal from Access Capital. Thank you. I now over to you, sir. Thank you, Neha, and good evening, everyone. Welcome again to the post-result conference call of Purvankara Limited. We have with us the senior management of the company, led by Abhishek Kapoor, Executive Director, Group CEO and CFO, Mr. Vishnu Murthy, Senior Vice President, Risk and Controls, and Neeraj Kumar Bhattam. President, I now hand over the call to the management for the initial comments. Thank you. Thank you, Ashok. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining the Vandra Limited Serving Call. I am Nidhi Kravan, President of Finance at Vandra Limited. We appreciate your time today as we present our financial results and quarter year ending March 31st, 2024. Results and a comprehensive presentation are available on the stock exchanges for your review. In FY24, Purvanka Limited achieved exceptional performance, recording a free sales of Rs. 5,914 crore, marking a remarkable 90% year-on-year growth. We anticipate continued upward momentum and features driven by our strong pipeline of launches and the unwavering trust of our customers. Our commitment to excellence is in on all, all aspects of our operations beyond this financial 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 matrix. For FY24, Kurvangra led with sales of INR 2,762 crore, followed by Provident at INR 2,041 crore, and Kurvaland at INR 1,122 crore. In Q4 FY24, we achieved an impressive pre sales figure of INR 1,947 crore, reflecting a 93% year-on-year growth. <laughs> Collections were robust at Rs. 1,094 crore for Q4 FY24, representing a 66% year-on-year growth. For the entire FY24, collection totals Rs. 3,609 crore, demonstrating a 60% year-on-year growth. Throughout the financial year, we launched 12 projects with total level area of 9.47 million of services to meet the preferences of our diverse Triangles across various categories. We have given total positions for 2,614 units in FY24 across the Lankara group. In line with our strategic plan and commitment to expansion, we are excited to enter the member redevelopment market. We have selected as the preferred developer for redeveloping a residential housing society in Kali Hill, Mumbai. The project has estimated, estimated development potential of 0 0.41 million, million square feet carpet area and our share of level area in it is 0.21 million square feet and the potential gross development value of over 2,100 crore. The strong response and numerous inquiries from the society indicate the continuous expansion of our development portfolio. In the previous quarter, we were appointed as developer for a redevelopment society in Lokhanwala, Mumbai, level area of 0 0.6 million square feet with a GDP over Rs. 1,500 crore. Our launch pipeline is robust with approximately 15 million square feet of the new project slated for the coming period. Notably, non download projects now comprise 47% of the total launch pipeline. Additionally, Provident accounts for 42% of the launch pipeline, aligning with the market trends and our group, group's strategic focus. Coming to our debt management, our net debt increased from INR 1,741 crore in Q3 FI 24 to INR 2,151 crore in Q4 FI24, and net debt to equity ratio from 0.85 to 1.14. I would like to up update and highlight that the uh, way the debt I increase debt will be replied with increased debt. We have reached IFC and ASK, two market investors who work with us and invested in two of our projects. And both the projects we have fully reached them, and by utilizing this increased debt. Our cash and bank balance is still at 931 crore as on 31st March 2024, which indicates the strong liquidity profile ensuring a security and operational continuity. 
the excellent selection figures highlighted our commitment to exclusion excellence. The success of our effective collection of charity is evident in our net operating surplus reached to INR 513 crores for FY 2024. To underscore our strong financial position, I would like to emphasize that as of March 31st, 2024, the balance receivable from so units total approximately INR 4,467 crores. This amount covers approximately 50% of our remaining costs needed to complete the inventory currently available for sale. It indicates that sustainable substantial portion of the cost for completing the remaining inventory has already been secured for receivable, giving us a solid foundation to fulfill our financial obligations. Moreover, our cash flow visibility is equally promising with the projected amount of INR 7,455 crores expected over the next three to four years. In addition to this, estimated surplus from two commercial projects is INR 1,356 crores. Estimated surplus from launch pipeline project is I am at 2,696 crores, to uh, overall surplus, estimated surplus of 11,507 11, crores. Finally, according to our financial performance, in Q4 FR24, our total revenue grew to by 112% year on year to I am at 947 crores. The EBITDA for Q4 FR24 was I am at 139 crores, with a 15% EBITDA margin. However, there is a loss for the quarter of 7 crores. So, FY24, our total revenue increased by 60% to 2,260 crores. The EBITDA for FY24 was 530 crores with the EBITDA margin of 24%. The tax for the year was INR 52 crores. Our, our pre-sale value, I would like to uh, you know, highlight that our pre-sale value for FY24 was 5,914 crores. And in sales and marketing ex expenses related to this big sales number, and also the overhead income to achieve these sales numbers has been charged to the PNL for the financial year. However, the revenue, revenue in the PNL has come only for 2,614 units which were handed over in the, uh, in the financial year, which has a revenue value of 2,460 crore. In conclusion, FI24 has been significant and eventful period for our company, characterized by remarkable achievements across all key performance indicators. We are poised to expedite the development of new residency projects across India, delivering exceptional value to our customers and forcing long-term shareholders value. Thank you for listening, listening and we welcome your questions you may have. Um, let me, this is Abhishek here. Hello, everybody. Uh, let me start with an apology for uh, the delay and um, uh, sorry for uh, late upload of the financials. Uh, going forward, um, I, I'm assuring everybody here on the call that um, we will keep this call the next day and give sufficient time for everybody to study the financials and, um, you know, be comfortable with asking questions. Again, uh, apologies, and we are happy to answer any questions you may have. Thank you. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handset while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Himanshu Jain from Tiger Assets. Please go ahead. Mr. Himanshu, your line has been unmuted. Please go ahead with your question. Mr. Himanshu, your line has been unmuted. Please go ahead with your question. As there are no response for the current participant, our next question is from the line of Deepak Puswami from Swan Investment. Please go ahead. Hi. Uh, good evening to the management team. 
congratulations for the excellent set of numbers uh, and also for the agency platform team so my first question is regarding uh, is regarding the agc capital platform deal only uh, we have mentioned in the ppt there are the uh, some projects which are from the existing land bank to the extent gdp of 9400 crores and there would be some new acquisition which we are looking at to 7700 crores so could you please uh, share with uh, further details in terms of the which are the project which are being a part of this deal now and also since this deal will also incrementally monetize our cash uh, project at the faster pace how should we look into that going ahead and uh, whether this would be pre predominantly for the growth capital or there would be some part of the debt reduction from the incremental cash uh, thank you deepak uh, for uh, your wishes um so deepak just to give you a background so the, as you rightly mentioned about 17000 Of which about 19,400 from existing. So what is happening is a part of the capital is getting deployed to unlock these lands where you have either some position or some settlement or some sanction or something, some conversion cost It's like that to bring these projects to uh, other uh, uh, for the launch. Having said that. Balance money that is available will get deployed in new projects, and that will create a, a further GDP of about seven thousand seven hundred crores at a substantial basis. Second thing is that uh, you know, with uh, out of the way, uh, clearly government uh, housing as a business is priced for growth, both in terms of bringing the existing land into the market. Uh, and uh, to add more land banks, which is currently in the in the pipeline, where we are in advanced conversations uh, 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 in the marketplace. Uh, so uh, overall, it is I think this will add tremendous value uh, uh, to uh, to provident uh, housing. The second part I must mention is that from within the portfolio of existing projects. And this is nine hundred and nine thousand three hundred and seventy-seven to nine thousand four hundred odd crores of GDP. It will be able to repay the entire amount to uh, 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 to ACS. So entire new investment then becomes our uh, uh, you know uh, our uh, free uh, completely uh, uh, that we deploy. So in that sense, we already have a financial closure to to repay the entire uh, 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 money that is getting invested by. Uh, uh, By ACSC capital, and if you look at existing uh, projects, we are looking at about uh, sellable area of 14 million square feet coming in from the existing uh, projects, and you are looking at a sellable area of about 1200 plus crores coming. Uh, sorry, 2600 plus crores coming from the existing projects. Okay, and so secondly, on the uh, Mumbai expansion plans. Uh, In the in the second half, we have added two projects: one in Lokhanwala and one in Pali. Uh, if you can throw some light in terms of the profitability angle of these projects, and also we have also mentioned there are certain few things which are at the advanced stage of negotiation uh, in the MMA region. If you can throw some light on that part as well, whether these would be con uh, continuously in the southern central market or. uh this would be uh, in the northern part of the market or in the western part of the uh, mumbai if you can throw some light on that region that part that would be really good right um so good question one is as far as both these topics are concerned like we have always mentioned our target or uh, ebitda target is in the range of 30% Uh, uh, for for on average, whatever investments we are making, some may be little lesser, some may be little higher. But I must tell you that both these are massive projects, and the scale and size of these projects in these locations is just not available. To have an excess of 2.5 acres in Bangalore Pali Hill, I don't think that we have many plots or any plot which is of that size. So that obviously clearly commands a premium. In that market, and we are already, you know, receiving receiving uh, uh, calls for for purchasing that, right? So, so we are very very optimistic about uh, what kind of realization we can make at Pali Hill, and of course in Lokhanwala again, this is 
uh, absolutely a prime Lukhan Wala plant. You know, and there is significant demand in that market. It's a very mature market and we believe that we will be able to bring in the kind of quality that Purvankara brings in, we'll be able to command a premium in that market. So again, as I mentioned, we, we, should, we will target as per our uh, company policy the 30% of the time. That is one. Okay. So it's a planning is concerned. You know, as a business, uh, uh, you know, when we look at sitting in various geographies, uh, for us, what we intend to do is we intend to have presence in western suburbs and uh, south Mumbai uh, and central suburbs uh, in terms of redevelopment. So, if I was to break this down, redevelopment strategy will spread right from, uh, you know, like Dadar Mahim going up to western suburbs or to Borivali. And on the southern side, in the island city, on and on the central side up to Chengdu. Chengdu, beyond Chengdu redevelopment opportunities, we may be very, very mindful and careful we may not evaluate uh, because of the uh, feasibility of the redevelopment opportunity. That is one. As far as development, JDA, yes. or acquisitions are concerned, we are looking at across the board, across the city. Clearly, we want to enter. We already have a project in Delhi uh, Valley, uh, Shilfata. We are intending to add a project in Thane because Thane is a big market and we believe that uh, we want to be active uh, uh, participants in that market and bring in and get a piece of that market as well. So, uh, Mumbai as a strategy, uh, I think we are very clear at, that we are looking at presence in all of these markets. Of course, we are also evaluating the new airport area and opportunities there uh, thereof because we believe that at some point in time the market will open up. And sir, just continuing on that part, what would we, what what is the investment we have made in the Mumbai region so far in terms of the project acquisition, and what would be the investment we would be looking out to do incrementally, and when so what would be the launch pipeline for the uh, this Bandra project as well as uh, for the other project, uh, Lokhandwala project. So that is from my. Lukhanwala, we should definitely take it to market. Uh, and Lukhanwala, uh, 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 we have said Q3, between Q3 and Q4 for sure. And Pali Hill, our target will be that we should take it to market in Q4 or Q1 of next year. Uh, and as far as investment is concerned, I think I can, uh, we, can, we can send that data to you separately. Sure. Uh, I have a few more questions. I will come in the queue. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from Darayan of Sumit Kumar from JM Financial Institutional Securities. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, uh, good evening, Abhishek. Uh, uh, thanks for taking my question and uh, congratulations on a great set of numbers as well as. Sorry uh, to interrupt you, sir. May I request you to use the handset, please? Uh, is this better now? Yes, sir. Yeah, so. Uh, uh, Thanks for taking my question and congratulations on a great set of numbers and also on conclusion of two market deals in the Mumbai market. Uh, my first question is on you know, the land bank uh, that the company has, uh, which is sizable close to around 28 million square feet of, uh, I think, uh, development potential. Uh, so in terms of uh, uh, BD business development, how are you looking at it? How, what is your target? Uh, at least on an indicative basis for the next two, three years. Uh, and as a follow-up to that, how much of the launches would come from the existing land bank monetization and how much would be from the newer projects added? So uh, for the next year, as we have published, we are looking at launching about 15 million square foot from within the current land bank. Uh, as you know, that we have you know, we've sold out about 7.35 million square foot last year. So the velocity at which we are selling, we need to replace our inventory. So our target will be to maintain our 40 plus million square foot of inventory at any point in time. So therefore, there is a big gap in terms of acquisition now, uh, uh, given that we are uh, launching so much, as well as uh, uh, we have sold uh, you know, the kind of sales that we have already done. So therefore, our goal will be to minimum maintain 40 million square foot, but at any point in time, our target is that from the date of deployment, we take the product to market within 9 to 12 months out the limit, right? So that you're not sitting on any investment. It's just a matter of uh, uh, plan sanction and uh, uh, launching the product at any point in time. So so in that sense, and 
you know, uh, that's, that's point number one. Point number two, in terms of, uh, I think you asked about geography, isn't it? Uh, no, uh, uh, I mean, uh, what will be coming from the existing land bank of 28 and how much you intend to add? Uh, so, 15 million square foot will come from current uh, land bank and whatever we add this year, so as, as I think somewhere we have mentioned in the in the, uh, in the the ICP that we have already paid 300 crores of land advances and we are expecting closure of some of these projects in next, uh, uh, say, you can assume within next uh, one quarter, say, 90 days time frame. And as those get closed, our endeavor will be as much as possible we can bring some of these projects into the market within the same financial year. So we're not able to give a guidance right now on what we'll be able to bring to the market. Obviously, there's an internal target and, and there is a bunch of stuff that is going on. But our goal will be to definitely bring in more energy to the market uh, so that we can we can continue to grow uh, you know, at a rapid pace and we are able to get a market growth rate. Uh, so to answer your question, 14 million secure and it will be definitely about 14 million what we say to market this year. Sure. And in Mumbai, uh, is it uh, that you are only looking at redevelopment? Or in the newer markets like Thane and, uh, you know, near the airport area, new airport area, you'll be looking at outright uh, land acquisitions as well? Um, uh, we're looking at outright as well, JDA as well, uh, both in Thane and the Navi Mumbai uh, as in Panvel area, uh, because we see that also as a growth sector over time. Uh, uh, but we're looking at both options. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, so that's helpful. I mean, uh, that's all from my side. Thank you and all the best. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Shivang Joshi from Centrum PMS. Please go ahead. Good evening, sir. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, firstly, you want to understand when I look at the presentation on the on your debt slide. So your net debt has slightly gone up, and consequently your uh, NCD OCD amount has gone down. Can you throw some light on this? And consequently, your borrowing cost, as highlighted in your cash flows, net interest cost has gone up from an average of 70, 80 crores to 200 crores. Some, um, if you can emphasize in this part. So, you are absolutely right. Two of the NCD uh, amounts which we have been reporting as in NCD issued to the IFC and NCD issued to the ASK has been come down. Because we have actually repaid to them, and uh, as in our slide number 14 was given the detail, about 410 crore we have repaid to them, and we have repaid from the, the, the project which already launched. We have raised the money on a very complicated cost, and from there, this, uh, this growth investment has been repaid. So that is the reason of uh, this two entries going out of our next slide. And, and uh, now, the however, while we repaid, and to that extent, our debt has, debt has gone up. So for the, for the uh, quarter, if you compare with the previous quarter, debt has gone up by 2019 crore. The end use also we have given uh, you know, slide for me. About 410 crore is going towards giving an interest to a repayment of IFC and PSK. And we also invested about more than 300 crore in the requiring new debt part of the services we have done in advance. Advance. So part of the money, part of this, uh, you know, loan has gone towards paying, uh, funding those advances. And part of the money has used from different accruals. So I hope I, uh, I given the answer of all your questions. Or if you have anything more, I can... Uh, so, uh, okay, so largely you have refinanced your NCDs through your uh, interest-bearing debt. But uh, those NCDs were equity in nature, and thereby for a certain amount of IRR, it could have gone from the project cash flows. However, paying it, paying them back, then, then is actually in essence reducing the implicit cost of capital. Today, the, the, the borrowings are at the bank, bank rates, and thereby... The overall uh, cost, which is otherwise you would have to company having such which is not going to be added to the bottom line. And added to the bottom line. Okay, so your, your increased bor uh, in pay payout of interest of 200 crores is essentially of that nature. And hence yes. you see a higher yes. interest. In optical, uh, optical yes, yes. However, um, uh, the uh, return which otherwise I would have given to IFC or ASK, that, has, that will not go. That is even much more than the interest which I may otherwise I'm going to pay to the bank. Got it. Because for the first time we saw your interest payout being higher than the... Abhishek here. Yes, Abhishek. You have, we have great tailwinds and great uh, volumes and velocity that is happening right now, right? 
So we want to take advantage of the cash flow coming in and making sure that uh, we are able to bring as much value to the bottom line and to the value creation for the shareholders as possible. And therefore, it makes so much sense to say that, you know what, uh, uh, why don't you, you know, reduce your cost of capital and uh, take it to the bottom line and uh, uh, pay this off. So that's the, that's the basic thesis. I mean, the demand has been fantastic in these projects. The cash flow has been fantastic and you're, you're saying, you know, why not? Uh, uh, I, in fact, the, 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 the money taken for ESCO, I, ESK, I think, should be over before December. Uh, you know, we just recover because everything is sold out over there pretty much. I mean, it, it, it's selling pretty fast and uh, the construction is happening to complete the project. Similarly, we, we'll have, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, the other projects which I see are invested in. We're expecting the surpluses coming in there and starting to repay pretty quickly on the money that's been got down and then the cost is lower. So, in, 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 the, in the business sense, it makes fantastic sense. Okay, great. Uh, checking, uh when on your launch pipeline, when you say 14 million square feet, 7 million is the phases that you would be opening. And this would be from your line bank. So optically, should we expect, I mean, last year you closed at how much? 9 million square feet of uh, launches? Uh, yeah, we opened 9 million square feet of inventory uh, for sale last year. Out of, 15, okay. out of 13 odd million that we got uh, uh, for sanction, we opened, uh, 10 million square feet, we opened about uh, 9 million square feet. You're right. And this year, what you have mentioned in your slide 22, launch pipeline 7.28 million per feet. What is the uh, status of approvals of these projects? Are these already at advanced stage of approvals? And should we see large part of or all of them coming in this year itself? Some uh, uh, Something if you can highlight this. Absolutely. So I think a lot of momentum you will see starting from the end of second quarter and possibly make most of it, a lot of it will come in the third and fourth quarter because we are all in, uh, in approval stage. And as I mentioned earlier, uh, our target will be to make sure that we, the uh, goal will be that we make sure that we open uh, higher than what we have opened in the last year. So while we have opened 9 million, we'd like to do that, but this is what we have done here is give you visibility of what we already have in hand, which we have complete clarity on that this is definitely coming. Uh, having said that, I think that we will possibly, uh, in all likelihood, add some more projects to it uh, in next two quarters. Okay. Uh, finally, on your cash flow, uh, when, when I look at the closing cash and cash balance is 931 per could you give a broad spread between how much would be in escrow, which you cannot uh, transfer to the other, I mean, which, which has to be retained at a project level, and how much would be free uh, cash uh, to be uh, utilized? About 500 crore money is lying into different project escrow accounts, RRI accounts, etc., subject to submitting of certificate and withdrawal, etc. And about 400 crore are the fixed deposits, money which you have raised or taken from loans, and then money yet to be deployed. The money is for land costs. That is money lying in the form of fixed deposits with the banks. Uh, if I may continue, uh, a follow-up question on that. On the deployment piece, the Mumbai 2 redevelopment Thank project. Thank you, sir. I request you to come back for a follow-up question. I'll, I'll join. I'll join back. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Abhishek from Yes Securities. Please go ahead. Uh, good evening, sir. Uh, my only question is uh, that I uh, just want to understand the structure of SDSC platform. So how, uh, I mean, the, what are the responsibilities, uh, how equity uh, would be infused? I mean, 1150 gross of uh, total platform. So what could be our, uh, our share in that and uh, how cash flow would be distributed? First and foremost, I'd like to update you. It is the SDFC uh, uh, NCDs are a zero coupon uh, NCD, the zero coupon bond. So there is a no interest servicing for those NCDs. And this money, uh, they'll be investing, uh, the, or this uh, uh, NCD will be issued by the Provident Housing Limited, the 100% on subsidy of Pravankara Limited, or subsidy of Provident Housing Limited. In the first tranche, Provident Housing Limited will be issuing NCDs of 550 crore. And those NCDs will be zero coupon bond. That is the structure. And the money will be applied out of the entire facility of 1150 crores. We will be, uh, you know, uh, uh, investing about 300 and 350 or crore in, in existing projects. The remaining, remaining money will be going to acquiring new land parcels. 
and service will happen to to this NCB by saving seven percent of the cash flow, so cash flow surplus from the project, and there will be no fixed obligation. Understood, sir. And sir, uh, uh, another part is uh, when when we are adding up the uh, when we are transferring our project, right, which already we have. So, are we going to get something out of that, or that is a part of structure only? I, I mean, we are, part. we are not transferring any of our assets. Those assets are there where they are. In the Pravankar Limited, the assets are there, and Provident House Limited assets are there. The money which we are utilizing towards unlocking those assets, either land parcel or existing project projects, and and the surplus of these projects will go uh, go towards servicing the. In NCD, our 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 plan is that uh, service or repay fully repay uh, this NCD from the existing project itself, and new project which is going to require from the investment will be a additional effects for the company. So, grossly, uh, what kind of cash flow or the percentage of cash flow will be uh, diverted to us in general? No, the cash flow will will not be uh, you know uh, there will no fixed cash flow will be diverted to them. If, if these 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 projects which are a part of the platform will be a through mechanism and basis the business plan, if there is any surplus left in the month, then out of the surplus, certain percentage will go towards servicing of the NCD. In a in a manner that that NCD will uh, NCD will uh, decide fully the full repayment of NCD, also NCD gets the agreed return. So if you look at it, uh, Abhishek, I just add to this. Uh, so total from within the existing projects where the capital is getting deployed, which Neeraj was talking about, we are looking right. at about 2,600 plus crores of surplus. Now right. that 2,600 plus crores of surplus will be more than sufficient not just to uh, uh, repay APFC, give their return, but leave surplus for us. Other than that, what this will do is it will add further uh, we are estimating about 1900 plus crores of uh, surplus for us from the new investment. So, with this, our ability to scale covenant housing and almost develop 21 million square foot, which is what we are targeting, uh, uh, from this platform uh, will be possible and adding significant value to the, uh, to the business as an and the organization. Okay, sir. Got it, got it. Sir. Thank you, thank you. That's all my, all my Thank you. The next question is from Delaina Faranodip Singh from MAS Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you for the opportunity and uh, congratulations on the great set of numbers for FI24. Uh, my question is at a strategy level, uh, like how we have a sub-brand uh, Provident under Purvankara, is there a school of thought uh, for having a Another sub brand in the ultra Sorry to interrupt you, sir. May I request you to use the handset, please? Uh, am I audible now? Yes, sir. Yeah, my question was on the uh, strategy level, uh, like how we have a sub brand in the affordable housing space, which is Provident. Is there a school of thought of having an ultra luxury brand? Given the premiumization theme in India is picking up loud and clear, and we've seen success stories of some of the listed players. Uh, some of the great projects that they've launched and it's sold like in record days. So is there thought on those lines? Uh, see, as a strategy, uh, I'm sure you're aware that Purvankara is clearly the uh, uh, luxury brand. And uh, from the way we present or we uh, uh, will present the product as far as ultra-luxury is concerned, will obviously, uh, uh, you know, uh, a much higher, uh, many notches higher, and therefore, the whole uh, approach and model that we are looking at is different. But to answer the question, will we look at a new brand? We don't need to look at a new brand because Purvantara itself is known for luxury uh, homes. So, uh, and, and the kind of quality and the product that we bring on the table. You know, uh, I'll give you an example. For example, all of these development projects that we have run, and you know, a bunch of them which is currently uh, we are closely engaging with, all of these customers are, are already living in these ultra luxury homes, right? And of course, the, 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 the project has been developed long back and they, they may go re, into redevelopment, but having said that, they all come from uh, uh, very wealthy uh, positions. And they have visited our projects and they said, you know, uh, uh, we think your quality and your brand is fantastic and is brilliant. So 
we don't need another brand. I think brand over the last 50 years is, uh, has uh, or it has gained so much respect in the marketplace. I mean, if you go out there and we see this every day, especially in the Mumbai and Pune market, which is relatively people say it's a new market, but then every time I'm out there talking to people and the team is out there, we realize that, you know, the brand is, has a phenomenal recognition in that market. So, you know, we don't need another brand as a strategy. What we will do clearly is take uh, take the product several notches up uh, and be extremely competitive in the kind of product we bring in the market. Sure. Uh, a connected question on similar lines. Uh, our average realization seems to have kind of stabilized very nicely around that 7,900 mark. Uh, with our foray into Mumbai uh, and uh, with the luxury brand that you spoke about, do you see it clocking the 10K mark in the next coming year? No, Kaj, definitely, you see, if you just look at Purvankara in isolation, without Purva Lion and Provident, our average realization is already about 10,000 feet square foot, 10,229. Provident housing is at 7,800 and Purva Land is at 5,444. Now, see, what's happening is, uh, now, if you look at Purva Land, like last quarter, uh, we, we had launched a project in Chennai, where our average realization was, say, 3,000 feet square foot. That drags down the overall average realization. But are we making money at 3,000 rupees? Of course we are making money at 3,000 rupees, right? But your average looks smaller. But if you break this down and say, have you, we've already crossed 10,000 in Purvankara. And I can tell you for sure that once we, and which we are already in Bombay, uh, we will definitely average realizations will go up and Purvankara average realization will relatively go up much higher. That's clearly going to happen. Sure. Sure. And my last question. Uh, I think great set of numbers in terms of the sales value, uh, not almost touching 6,000 crores. And I understand uh, as per Indies, uh, the realizations will happen at the time of delivery. So tentatively, can you give me a sense, when do we see the peak EPS that we've seen in 2012, 2014 level of around six, six and a half rupees? Uh, when do we see that coming back? Yeah, I think the journey is uh, between next, uh, I would say between next three to four years time frame. Uh, but you will start seeing green shoots uh, possibly in the early, early third year from now. Uh, so I would say this is 24, 25, 25, 26. So 27, 28, you will start seeing the green shoots. Because, see, uh, see the thing is that you are expanding so rapidly and your these sales have happened in the past which you are delivering now. And that is causing, as per the accounting standard, what is rightly said, uh, you know, the survey is looking on the on paper. But as you start to deliver more and more projects and newer projects, and the pace of delivery starts catching up with the pace of sales, closer it will never catch up, obviously, because we will continue to grow. But it starts becoming better and better. You will see better and better uh, gross profits, and therefore, and some of these older investments will start. Uh, uh, making capital. Like, for example, uh, a large amount of GNA may have been spent in, in the Western region, but you've added or you will continue to add significant top and bottom line to the business uh, in the next, uh, you know, uh, 9 to 12 months time frame. So, so I think I would say the answer is, uh, I would say third year and fourth year uh, would be significant. You'll start seeing green shoots possibly in uh, 24 to 28 months. Sure. Appreciate all the responses and wishing you all the best for the next year. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Rishikesh from Robo Capital. Please go ahead. Um, yeah, hi. Thank you for the opportunity. So my first question is regarding the... Sorry to interrupt you, sir. I request you to use the handset, please. I am audible now. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah, hi. So, uh, my question is with regard to the launches for FI25 that we have mentioned around 14 to 15 MSF. Could you please also mention what's the value of the launches that we are going to do? Uh, so, we are looking at a total uh, top line. Estimated top line is about 7,443 crore pre sales value. Uh, and you're looking at a surplus from these projects of about 2,696 crores. And we have delivered around 2,600 units for FI25 as per our PPTV. Uh, 
how many units do we target to deliver in FY25 and 26? Uh, look, I, I, I mean, last quarter itself we delivered about 1188 units, and we have received OC um, for total of um, uh, which is pending to be recognized is about 1700 units, right? Uh, out of 3600 units for which we have already received OC, we have handed over 1700. Uh, we will be handing over uh, at least 1700 from the OC, <coughs> which is already received. Our target for the year is about 4,000, uh, uh, approximately between 3,500 to 4,000 units. Because what may also happen is, as it happened last year, when you get the OC to the time where it takes, customers able to take possession. Sometimes there is a delay, but our target will be to deliver, like we delivered last year, uh, uh, about 2,200 plus units. A two thousand six hundred plus units in the next year. Our target will be to deliver anywhere between three thousand five hundred to four thousand units. Okay, and would it be fair to say that likewise, our uh, reported on a reported basis, our revenue growth would also be upwards of fifty percent for FY twenty five? Yeah, I mean, if you do the math clearly, from twenty six hundred units, if you go up to four thousand units, obviously you will see the you can match the growth. As far as the revenue recognition is concerned, uh, uh, we have to just see the mix of uh, inventory whether it will be exactly proportionate to that. Uh, because obviously there will be certain amount of land and certain amount of property development which also can will get developed uh, will get delivered. So we have to just look at the realization and come back to you with a specific answer. But having said that, I think uh, yeah, we can expect that uh, revenue growth will be intact. Okay, and lastly, on a reported basis again, then what would be our sustainable EBITDA margins. Look, uh, EBITDA margin, you know, as I mentioned earlier, is also factoring into my marketing costs and my uh, GNA for expansion. Uh, I, I will leave that disclaimer on the table because a business that is growing very rapidly will have to make investments ahead of uh, uh, of getting the return on the investment in terms of GDP and surplus. That's as far as GNA is concerned. As far as marketing is concerned, clearly we are extremely aggressive in the marketplace, and <laughs> with the quantum of uh, pre-sales that we will look at as it goes up, we will definitely look at uh, increasing costs, which will clearly get booked as expenses. So, to that extent, leaving that disclaimer, I would think that our target is pretty much intact. If I look at the project level uh, EBITDA margins, they are absolutely intact, but intact. But what's happening at the corporate level is that when you put that uh, gross Gross, uh, gross margin, and then you put in um, your uh, marketing cost of new launch, of new launches, and of increased sales, and you look at your GNA, and that's where it starts uh, to look different. So that is what earlier conversation was as to when do you see, you know, the books reflecting really the kind of value we are creating in the organization, and I, I, I think uh, I think the brand will start seeing that reflecting on paper. I would say the third and fourth year quite steadily, and then possibly grow grow pretty rapidly. Okay. Okay. No problem. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Sushil Jaiswal from Bajaj Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah. Good evening, sir. Uh, based on the existing growing sales and good collection, what is your going forward trajectory? Do you think that uh, it will sustain the same in the next couple of quarters too? Uh, if you look at if you are asking about the overall real estate of the market, yes, we believe that it will sustain. The market is growth, demand is well there, and uh, so there and then it will sustain. Uh, see, I think you know what what may uh, happen is that uh, we have pulled a lot of losses in the last quarter, in the last year. Uh, we may see some of our launches spill over uh, to the second, third, and the fourth quarter. We will see a lot more pre-sales, I would think, in the uh, in the uh, second, third, and fourth quarter. A lot of it will happen in the third and fourth quarter specifically. So, uh, in the first two quarters, uh, I think we have planned sizes. We are waiting for. They are all in advanced stages, but elections are around the corner. Elections are ongoing across the country. Then there are some state elections happening. So keeping those in mind, you may see, uh, you know, some of these launches come in the third and fourth quarter. So uh, uh, I mean, keeping that disclaimer uh, in in mind, I think everything else is on track. I, I would I would see a lot more details coming in the third and the fourth quarter. 
Okay, uh, and my second question is: so, as the real estate sector has begun to rise, so do you think this scenario is in every part of the country or just some specific parts? Also, a majority of the business comes from southern part and some from western side also. So, do you have any plans to expand your presence in north, uh, in uh, in northern side like Delhi and here region also? So, look, uh, we are seeing demand across the country, uh, and in. We see tailwinds and consolidation across the country, across the segment, which is great advantage for a for a brand like Purvankara. Uh, to answer the second question, yes, we are looking at NCR. Uh, we are uh, evaluating opportunities. We have already started to put the put the team on ground, and we will definitely look at. I mean, we our our intent is clear that we will be a national player, and we will rapidly expand in these geographies. Web is obviously something which is maturing, which we are already seeing, and we intend to first uh, while we do the acquisitions and look at new acquisitions in NCR, Gurgaon, and Delhi to start with. Uh, our first endeavor will be to make sure that we get our launches in the Western region. So this year, I think this financial year, Western region will be a big one for us. Okay, thank you, sir. That's all. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Shivang Joshi from Centrum PMS. Please go ahead. Thank you for the follow-up, sir. Uh, I wanted to understand uh, what is your take on the amount to be spent on BD in FY25 and 26, considering that you have got decent free cash uh, and good correction run rate. And on the two Mumbai projects, what is the capital that you would be deploying? So, and you two can quantify this in both local and land party. So, as far as look, BD is concerned, as I mentioned earlier, we are not looking at a capital target, but we are looking at a replacement target. In the sense that we have already uh, uh, launched uh, uh, and sold last year about 7.35 million square foot, and this year we are looking at launching another 14 million square foot. So, clearly, we are looking at replacing that inventory and staying above 40 million square foot at any point in time. Uh, and the second thing that you asked about debt, uh, yes. our, our uh, total cost to launch for these projects is in, uh, uh, above 900 crores. And as I mentioned earlier, you know, we are looking at, oh, uh, sorry, uh, that will be about 650 crores. Uh, cost uh, cost to uh, land cost plus cost to launch will be about 650 crores for these two projects specifically which you asked about. Um, and uh, as, as we mentioned earlier, between these two projects, we will be able to generate uh, more than 3,600 crores. Okay. Uh, any specific numbers you have in mind or uh, as a strategy, X, um, what amount you will be putting as a capital for the West? Since your land banking, you will have to start afresh uh, in the western region. Afresh in the sense, relatively, you have a higher land bank in the south versus the west. Look, uh, as I mentioned, so you know, one of the things which I mentioned in the previous call is that um, a market like Kochi, we are sitting with a significant surplus of uh, about 1800 crores. What we are really looking at doing, and hence you will see some amount of uh, capital churn and debt churn, and you know. Uh, is that we are looking at reallocating this capital into the western region, which is Mumbai and Pune, right? And that is significant capital. I mean, even if I discount it and say that, you know, I will take out certain amount of capital from this region and uh, reallocate that capital in the western region, uh, clearly, you know, uh, the number I mentioned is there, right? So, so I think we have enough and more within our portfolio to look at in terms of equity to be able to deploy in the western region. And as I mentioned, Mumbai in the past also, Mumbai is going to be a significant part of our portfolio. But, I mean, I've been saying this for a long time. We intend to get back to at least 40 to 50 percent of our value wise The square footage could be less, but value wise we'll definitely look at getting at least 40 to 50 percent of our pre-sales from the Mumbai region. So it is, we'll continue to deploy in that market. Okay. Great. Thank you. Thank you for answering the question and congratulations once again on the very good set of numbers. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Saurabh Gilda from Motilal Oswal Financial Services. Please go ahead. Yep. Hi. Am I audible? Yes. Yes. 
Hi, so congrats on the good set of numbers and uh, most of my questions are answered. Uh, I just have one question on uh, you know uh, trajectory for pre-sales doing it. I know uh, you don't give a uh, exact guidance, but uh, just wanted to understand uh, what sort of pre-sales that you want to achieve or what sort of growth that you intend to achieve for at least for the next two three years. Uh, look, I think I've mentioned this in the past. We, as we don't give guidance, you already see we, what we give guidance on is the number of projects and properties we're going to bring to the market and have also indicated that we'll definitely try and bring in more than what we brought in the last year. Uh, having said that, uh, our our goal is definitely to beat last year's number and and uh, to beat the uh, average market growth rate. So if we are assuming that somewhere in the mid teens will be the market, we will definitely beat that uh, growth rate in terms of our pre-sale numbers. Uh, and our plan is, uh, you know, to ensure that we are able to achieve that uh, that number. Okay. Yes, uh, you know, to answer it in another format, we are definitely part of the consolidation in the sense that we are going to make sure that we gain a lot more market share. Uh, in the process of this consolidation, what will be the extent of market share? I think that is that remains to be seen. Uh, it's also a factor of how much supply we are able to bring into the market, which we are working on now on a ongoing basis. So you know we will see where we land in the end of the year, but obviously we're not we're not looking at just growing at a uh, market rate. Okay, fair enough. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next follow-up question is from the line of Deepak Puswani from Swan Investment. Please go ahead. Thank you, sir. Thank you for the follow-up opportunity. So, firstly, on the launch pipeline, uh, on the launches front, how much was the sales contribution from the new launch projects uh, in FY24? Uh, in FY24 from new launches, um, let me come back to you with the exact data. I can I can share with you. We'll try and see if we can give it while you ask your next question. I'm sure you'll have more. Uh, sure. I don't know. Um, you on the uh, and later, at a later date. Um, yeah, you can write to us and we'll respond to it for sure. Sure. And so just harping again on the uh, interest expenses, if I were to look from the cash flow statement point of view, our interest outgo was... 443 crores against a net debt of 2150. Uh, just wanted to understand when, when we say repayment of the NCD of ASK and uh, other investors, uh, was there any premium component which was uh, made, payment was made for that during this quarter? And if yes, then what would be the sustainable kind of intersections outflow which we would be looking out at the current gym? So these these A, these NCDs have been paid at a agreed uh, IRR. There's no additional premium. Pre however, whatever IRR was agreed to the investment, or that IRR it has been paid. And the second answer to your second question, so while while uh, repaying these invest NCDs of ISC and ASK, we have taken uh, the, the, the debt at competitive rate. So to that extent, interest will go up go up by servicing those uh, debts. However, what uh, you know, the beginning of the conversation, conversation which I should mention about it, the these uh, both the debt for ASK as well as IST investment which you have uh, returned returned which you have given from the from the investing project, which project is doing very good. And we are estimating that from the project cash flow itself for uh SI and, and uh, repayment mechanism, a substantial amount of debt will be repaid in this financial itself. Plus there are surplus from the next phase of the project. Right. Significant surplus in that project. I mean uh, significant, significant levels uh, in the project which uh, needed this talking about. Okay, uh, but from the cash flow perspective, I mean, from the next year perspective, what would be the interest outflow we would be looking into? See, look, it, it's a three. Uh, our our uh, you know, kind of drop that is about. Uh, uh, no, uh, 3,000. 3,000 uh, 3, crore. 3,000 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 
Thank you for the follow up uh, sir so just just uh, one question uh, we have invested uh, roughly upwards of 7 750 crores uh, towards land in last two quarters so basically we are taking care of bd so uh, so how much i mean how much more capital is uh, are, are we uh, allocating towards bd or how we are going to uh, how much of bd we are targeting to maintain the growth uh, which we have seen in last one two years so that is one and secondly uh, with with that growth how we are going to uh, maintain the balance between growth and debt so let me break this down for you in two parts one is you know as i mentioned earlier our group we are always going to work towards outperforming the market and gain market share right and right. we are expanding in new geographies to ensure that our uh, our portfolio is diversified uh, wider and deeper now having said that as i mentioned earlier we want to first get to make sure that whatever was our original land bank which is section about 40 million square foot is secured back in our back in our book we want to maintain at least that much land bank at any point in time and the target is that we are able to move uh, efficiently to scale Uh, uh, launches and do the launches within nine to twelve months so, because we don't want to sit on any assets. We don't want to buy and wait. We will buy and uh, deploy and launch. Uh, so between these two things, uh, the fact is that we have about eleven thousand five hundred crores of surplus within the accrual within the uh, within the business internal accruals at this point in time. From the from the project which are already launched. <laughs> and from the project which we launched in the current financial year, over next year, you you can assume say four years time frame. Now, as that capital comes in, and we are reallocating capital, so we can't, we don't, and we can't necessarily wait for that capital to come in. We will say, for example, Kochi, I mentioned earlier earlier on the same call. We have got significant surplus. I would guess, I would estimate it would be an about eighteen hundred crore surplus sitting in Kochi, and for no reason including land and profits. So, what we want to say is that. And obviously, that means that to bridge that, uh, you may draw some money against that uh, and uh, take some cash out from there and put that money in Mumbai because you you believe that you'll be able to create a lot more value and you'll be able to lot more uh, do a lot more in Mumbai. So in that sense, first priority will be to uh, create growth from rebalancing and reallocating uh, capital within regions. That is priority number one. Priority number two for us is to look at opportunities where we can raise equity. So, for example, uh, we are looking towards now we are evaluating the next CIS. The first CIS is almost uh, deployed. The money is starting to. I mean, I'm sure the next quarter we start to return because the project is being launched, right? So, look at CIS as an opportunity. Third, you will go and create another platform where, like in SPSC, if you create a platform, you create another platform where you will look at deploying capital. Other than, for example, the first priority I said is to take money out of the region and put in a new region. So this will be a constant churn of capital to create uh, a, a growth opportunity that ensures that your BD is robust and you are able to <coughs> plan not for this year but for the next year and the year after. Because whatever we do this year, we have an impact on the next year and then the next year, right? So, so that's how we are looking at the business. And goal, as I mentioned. Earlier also that we are very very comfortable with uh, you know debt numbers on a per square basis uh, being under about a thousand rupees per square. So you know we will keep these parameters in mind. And the other factor that we must watch out for is our operating surplus. Now last year if you see our operating surplus was no uh, operating surplus was more than five hundred crores, five hundred thirteen crores. Obviously like Neer has mentioned earlier, we have paid out about three hundred crores of land advance, right? Uh, so the, the target will be to stay focused on cash flows, which is collections. Continue to spend money on your operations, run your operations, 
uh, aggressively and efficiently. And with that, you will create, so for example, if you look at total operating, not net operating, but operating surplus was 1,298 crores. So what I'm trying to say here is that between internal approval, reallocation of capital, AIS, equity platform, you will be able to manage the entire BD that you are working towards. So the current for the BD. And, and so, to just get to it, uh, in the first question when you asked about the LDLT <coughs> structure, there are 750 crore is committed for BD only. This is part of the structure. Okay, sir. Understood. Absolutely. Yeah, 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 sir. Right. Thanks. 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 That's all for my side. And uh, best of luck. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll take this as a last question. I would now like to hand the conference over to the management for closing comments. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for joining our call. I, I hope we have been able to answer all your questions. We, me and my colleagues are available. If you have any further questions, you write to us and we'll answer your questions. Thank you. Thank you. On behalf of Access Capital Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines. Thank you.